Okay, we're starting. Uh, Tim Cook is starting. I just barely got this running. <laughs> uh, this looks pre-recorded. So he's now talking about uh, doing this remotely and the camera is moving constantly. Clearly this is a high, highly uh, produced opening. I should have been way more prepared, but then what's the fun for that? He wants to invite us to their home at Apple Park. Okay, two big things. He's going to. He's sitting on a stool now. That means this is serious. He's brought up the uh, BLM situation and the importance of of uh, dealing with institutional inequality. It's very hard for a company uh, this uh, of this size to to not be hypocritical in some aspects of their business, especially when they start talking about this kind of stuff. We have to hit a live up to a far higher ideal. So now he's talking about the racial justice and uh, inequity initiative. So Apple has always been good about this stuff, but what more are they what are they doing and and the first thing that comes to mind is why are they doing this now obviously because of the trigger of the tragic death of floyd george so a lot of things have been triggered by the floyd george uh, incident it's very difficult for a company like this to put forward such a challenging um set of ideals because you're going to be caught with your pants down nobody is clean on the environment and and how these electronic devices are being manu manufactured. I think uh, Tim is much happier not having to do this live. <laughs> so iPad, iOS, iPad, oh, they went up too fast. Watch OS TV, TV OS, and Mac OS. Has this all been pre-recorded? Oh, now Craig is coming out. Well, that's kind of a cheat. I'm kind of disappointed that so far this thing is uh, pre-recorded. I get it. They can make a much better job of it. And they can take out all the glitches. But I think part of the fun of the live event are the glitches. Hmm. So now I f I iOS 14. We're talking about the home screen now and how Apple has always used the same look and feel updating the the screen but you've never really been able to move the the little uh, icons around to where you wanted which android can do i hope you don't mind my lighting from my monitors <laughs> my professional lighting uh, based on the light from my monitors and the radiation thankfully i'm i'm uh, not having any more children okay now we've got a musical interlude I have to say that handoff is my favorite feature on iOS and macOS. Being able to, not having to plug in the phone to just grab a picture or something off it and then sending it to the computer. Pure genius. I use that all the time. Okay, iOS 14, the music, little music interlude is done. This is going to be amazing according to Craig. Home screen. Okay, we're starting with the home screen. Today's home screen works great. Right. Wouldn't it be great to organize all those apps without doing a thing? Uh, uh, no, they've come up with an app library. Oh, it does it automatically in the way it thinks you should be organizing it. <laughs> Apple has gone and said, you people don't know what the heck you're doing. Go into jiggle mode. Clearly, Apple has found that we are incapable of organizing our, our phones. So they're going to organize it for us. Next, widgets. Oh, he wants to make the widgets even more accessible. <gasps> oh, you can now put widgets onto the home screen. Again, I think this is something Android has had for at least 30 years. Calendar on your home page, which makes a terrific amount of sense. Picture in picture. So you can keep watching while you're doing real work on your iPhone. I've some, I, I've often wanted that. Well, mostly, yeah, he just said it, mostly for the audio. Uh, it has bothered me that I can't keep the uh, uh, YouTube uh, video going for the audio while I'm doing something else on my phone. 
<laughs> oh, Siri. Update to Siri. Yale Gartner. There we go. Is telling us how much smarter Siri is going to be. She's a hand waver. I like hand wavers. I'm a hand waver. I, I speak with my hands. So a new application called Translate. And the idea is to also keep it secure. Oh, they've updated Memoji using machine learning. They should be able to send a fart Memoji. Oh, we can explore the world. Maps, what the frig is maps going to be useful if we're all at home? We just check out maps all the time and, and dream of where we might go and, and being able to go to a place like your local restaurant and take a look at the, the door, the front of the restaurant and, and remember what it was like. I don't like maps. It reminds me of the past that I don't have anymore. <laughs> okay, so Meg Frost is going to now talk about... She's the director of product design for Apple Maps. Good as she is and as well done as this presentation is, it's this thing is getting tedious and boring. Oh, we're back to back to Craig. CarPlay. Which has transformed the driving experience. I'm seeing a car key. Years and years of rumors about a Apple self-driving car. It has now been reduced to just the key fob. <laughs> Okay, 2021 BMW 5 Series, your Apple key fob. No, no, you're using your phone, right. You place your phone on the charging pan and then push to start. We've spent billions of dollars on self-driving cars and all we've got to show for it is this key fob option. <laughs> so this new BMW will be available next month. And, uh, but you have to buy the stand separately. iOS 14. I gotta change something here. I'm stopping momentarily. Okay, back again. <laughs> I've been recording this on 4K and I don't think I need 4K. So, I just switched to regular 1080p. Because I don't know if this experience really needs 4K. Can you tell the difference? Okay, so we got iPad OS, AR. I still haven't seen anything really useful with AR yet. I'm telling you, this pre recorded stuff is tiresome. I've re made sure I'm focused still. Extending the design language of iPad. This is, this is getting, I might just stop. Uh, this. Oh, now we're talking about Josh Schaffer. Schaefer, Schaffer. You know what? I'm 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 shutting down. I'm gonna watch this and I'll come back later when there's something interesting. This is so desperately dull I can't even make fun of it. I'll talk to you later. Kevin Lynch has got a bit of a pot. <laughs> And he's in an exercise facility. It looks like Apple's exercise facility. I like Apple Watch. An intelligent guardian of your health. Glow baby, nap, feeding, and changing times for your baby like you don't know. Like it's crying. It wants something. What I don't like about the maps and the directions on my Apple Watch is that it doesn't give me the, uh, you know, when I need to turn off quite soon enough it 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 uh, it's sort of like right you're right on top of the turn and then it goes turn 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 i i would like a little bit more of a warning okay now we're talking about the workout app jules is telling us new workout types dance wow <sighs> that's the main main reason i like my Apple watches uh, my exercising, although I haven't been doing any lately. It's been very, very difficult with this uh, you know, pandemic because I can't go to my fitness facility. Uh, what I usually do is I go to my fitness facility, uh, do 10 push-ups, and then come home. And I'm really thankful that I've got a trainer who's there checking that I do those 10 uh, push-ups properly because it's just impossible to do that at home. Hand washing app. It will tell you uh, whether you're washing your hand enough. Ah! So it checks the sound of hand washing and squishing soap between your hands. If you stop early, 
the Apple Wash, uh, Apple Watch, the Apple Wash. That's what they should change the name. They should change the name to the Apple Wash. That was good. Actually, I, I love my Apple Watch. That was a fun segment. Where are we going? I don't use any Apple Home products. Okay, get to the point. Yah Kaysen, Senior Engineer, HomeKit Software. Oh, look at that. So Amazon, Google, and Apple are getting together to actually create one standard. I wonder when this is going to happen. That means my Nest will work with uh, Apple Home. I don't have to get rid of it. Okay, Apple TV Plus. Who's watching Apple TV Plus? I have watched so far one show, which was the Beastie Boys special. Okay, what's a new Apple TV Plus they're working on? Isaac Asimov. Oh, no, this is a Foundation Series. Oh, is this going to be okay? I hope it's good. This... For me, if this uh, is good, oh, whoo, foundation, holy crap. Where's the mule? They're going to show the mule? Uh, ooh, I just gave away something. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, man. I would get Apple TV just for this. Okay. Uh, very good production values. I reread the series not too long ago, but I'm trying to think of who the characters are <laughs> in these clips, and I can't. Oh my gosh. I mean, uh, uh, they're not as iconic as, uh, let's say, Dune, Paul Entreides, and, you know, uh, though, who's the hero of the Foundation series? It looks good. I might have to reread the book just to be able to understand this trailer. <laughs> okay, Mac OS. I don't think they're going to be talking about the Hackintosh. Open core. <laughs> What are we going to call the new Mac OS? Big Sur, Mac OS, I was wrong. I predicted Mount Rushmore. New design, big updates. Biggest change in Mac OS ever. New craftsmanship. They're going to do a video, but they've just, this is a video. And now I got a, a video of, at a video. Allen Dive VP Human Interface. The goal was to bring even more clarity while retaining Mac's powerful capabilities and ease of use. Oh, they changed the shape of the corner radius. Okay, I'm done. Bye, folks. Video over. Oh, there's more. More than just the shape of the corner radius. Because I thought that would be enough for me. I would just like to be able to have something other than the gray on gray, which sometimes it's very difficult to find out what's on top of the screen. Entirely new in every detail. Yeah, they're making it look more like iPad OS. It's a huge release. I thought Craig said it was a huge relief. Because I think he was using this time while she was on to like go to the crapper. That's why it was a huge relief. Okay, Tim is talking about Big Sur. It's a historic day for the Mac. We're talking about transitions. Oh no, we might be talking about ARM. Power PC. Move to Intel. And now, here, huge leap forward for the Mac. Is this it? There we go. Apple's own Apple Silicon. Now, is this for all, all Macs? Apple Silicon. Isn't that what strippers use to make their breasts bigger? Now, he's always, Tim keeps going Apple to the next level. Johnny Suruji. Who? Going to one of a lab in an undisclosed location. Oh. Johnny Suruji. You want to have the highest performance at the lowest power consumption. I want to see a Mac with that chip running. That's what I want to see. Well, now Craig is going to talk about the software. So the technology is built into Big Sur to make the transition seamless. Apple has got all its native apps running on the new chips. Uh, Logic and uh, Final Cut Pro. So that's a surprise because I didn't think they were going to be able to do that. I, I, I'd be interested in finding out just what the performance is. I mean, that's the, that is what everybody wants to know. So earlier in this video, all the uh, demos were done on the new Mac with the uh, A chips. It's very impressive what Apple has done. Final Cut. Okay. 4K video using the bionic chip. Well, 
it's looking very smooth. Now he's talking, now Craig is talking about having a translation, a VM layer that lets you uh, run older software. Do you remember Rosetta? So it translates the application when you install the applications. I didn't know really at the very beginning to what level Apple was going to introduce the ARM chip. I mean, we all knew they were going to do it, but they have uh, really kicked this to another level. This is serious. So now they're showing Maya, the Intel version. Wow. We have to talk what implication this has for Hackintoshers. I did mention in a video, I'll have to pull it up a long time ago, that uh, the Mac software uh, development is a fraction of what they're building for iOS. And I predicted that the only way Apple can survive is to be able to have one basic code uh, platform to work on. And iPad is the, and iOS is the main uh, OS that Apple has to uh, support because Mac OS is a fraction of of the iOS uh, environment out there. And so this is exactly what's happened. This is what I predicted, that Apple is going to adopt iOS as its main uh, Apple Mac uh, software development system. It's only logical. So is this the end? It is a historic day, for sure. So the first Mac with the Bionic chip is going to be by the end of this year and the transition is going to take two years. But they're still going to be building Intel-based uh, uh, Macs. We hope you've enjoyed this very special keynote. At Apple, we've always drawn strength from my diversity of our global community. Being able to sock away our money in Ireland and pay almost no taxes, that's what makes us an international company. I wonder what happened when Apple approached Intel that they were finally going to make the change? Did, did they sort of like knock on the door and go, uh, hi, Intel. Oh, hi, Apple. Um, we, we gotta, we gotta talk. Oh, what about, uh, do you want to go out to dinner? Oh, <gasps> you're breaking up with me. Well, no, I, I y yes, but, well, I mean, you know, you know, this was the plan. I mean, this shouldn't be a surprise. Oh, well, there's a very big difference between <laughs> suspecting something and then finding out just like this. Oh, you're going to take me out to dinner, were you? You just haven't been performing particularly well. Oh, oh, really? It's all my fault, is it? <laughs> Lack of performance. Really hysterical. Oh, I'm hysterical. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Go away. I, I think that's probably exactly how the conversation took place. So what do I think? Well, from the Hackintosh side, what are they going to do? Well, um, that's going to be very interesting. I mean, right now, the thing that makes Hackintoshing uh, possible is that uh, Apple is basically running Intel PC software and all we're doing is creating a layer between the OS and the box and, and making Mac OS think that it's actually running on a Mac. It does beg the question, what is Apple going to do with the Mac Pro? And is the Mac Pro actually quantitatively faster than anything that Apple is using the, uh, their A chips on? That is going to be the question that everybody is going to want to know because if it's not as fast, then obviously they're going to be building Intel-based Macs for a good long time. There would make be there would make no sense to not have the most powerful computer available. So I want to see how deep into the range the A chips uh, have usable uh, power. That's it. So yeah, um, I'll do another video with regards to the implications uh, to the Hackintosh community. I have to think about this a little bit more. Till next time, denizens, so long.